Hello everyone, welcome to the CTV News on Calabash TV and on the Wave Radio 94.5. I am Lisa Joseph. Parliament has authorized the Minister for Finance to borrow 3.5 million Kuwait dinar or an estimated 11 million US dollars from the Kuwaiti Fund for Arab Economic Development for the purpose of financing the Shock Bay Grosley Road and Secondary Road Improvement Project. The agreement for the undertaking of the project was signed Monday. Prime Minister and Minister for Finance Dr. Kenny Anthony told the House that some $150 million is needed to complete the Shock Bay Grosley Road project. The loan from the Kuwaiti Fund, he said, is being offered at generous terms with an interest rate of 2.5%. As of now, Mr. Speaker, the Kuwaiti Fund for Arab Economic Development is making available Kuwaiti dinars three million five hundred thousand or roughly US eleven million dollars. The government of St. Lucia has received a loan, has all negotiated a loan from OPEC Fund for International Development OFID. That is in the vicinity of US eighteen million dollars, which means that so far we have found funding for twenty nine million US dollars. That leaves a balance roughly of US twenty six point six million which will be secured from a new fund, the Saudi Arabia Fund for Economic Development, and it will be the first time that we will be tapping into um, the Saudi Arabia Fund, which of course was very newly established, and we will be assisted in that process by the Kuwaiti Fund, who has very direct links. In fact, we have had preliminary engagement, and it is a matter of time before that balance is finalized and secured. 6.934 kilometers of road will be upgraded along the highway with an additional 20 kilometers of secondary roads to be rehabilitated. A number of uh, bypass roads will be uh, created to accommodate the construction. The widening of the existing two-lane road to a four-lane dual carriageway from Shock to the Groselay Injunction. So the intention really is to widen this so that we have a four-lane of course, I assume this can happen in most parts because essentially we do have some challenges because there are some buildings that are located fairly close to the main carriageway, but we'll see how that progresses in time. Secondly, we are going to be a grid at least seven junctions. These would include the Moshi Junction, the Marisville Junction, the Glass Motor Junction, Bois Rodney Bay, Bonterre, and Grosley itself. So all of these junctions will be upgraded to facilitate the smooth flow of traffic to and from the north. Then we have to respond to the needs of pedestrians so that there will be some pavement strengthening and construction of pedestrian walkways with safety bars and footpaths when necessary. In addition to this, there will be the construction of nine overhead footbridges now. The upgrade of the secondary roads will benefit communities from Morshi to Corinth and Granivere. The project will also create hundreds of jobs in the construction sector. Dr. Anthony noted that an extensive public awareness campaign would need to be embarked upon. I am unable to give honorable members a firm indication of what this will cost in a final analysis because obviously land acquisition will depend, the cost will depend on negotiating with the various parties and of course the market value of existing properties, but we are making provisions to cater to that possibility. We would have to engage the public to make them aware. For one thing, there will be delays. I think the North, as you know, um, is the main setting for our tourism plant in the island. Most of our hotels are in the north, so that um, we would have to sensitize not only hotel operators and managers, but also um, our guests who are moving either north or moving south. So uh, there will have to be a lot of public awareness. And two, we will have to sensitize our citizens to the challenges I have already alerted the parliamentary representative for Grosley that she will have to organize briefing sessions with members of the public together with the constituency council to alert them to the implications and what will be involved in that process.
Um, obviously, a project of that scale would provide opportunities for employment. Again, it is difficult at this stage to be specific about numbers of how many persons we employ, but it is fairly significant undertaking. So I would imagine that um, at least throughout the basic period of construction, anywhere from 400 plus workers would be employed with that number rising at certain peak periods, possibly to 600, 700. But again, I can't give honorable members definitive, definitive numbers. Um, we just have to wait and see as the construction progresses. But the important thing is that it is a project that will certainly help to provide a boost to construction. Because when you look at the economic performance of St. Lucia, with all the challenges we have had, whereas there is increasing buoyancy in the tourism sector to be judged by the number of arrivals that have taken place, the sector that has taken the hardest hit is the construction sector. Prime Minister Dr. Kenny Anthony there speaking in Parliament Tuesday.